So I'm now with uh, Masha Berger from the Current Institute in New York. And uh, Marsha, you talked about uh, modelization of uh, tsunamis generated by asteroids this morning. And yes. can you tell us a little more about it? Well, before I started working on asteroids, I was working on tsunamis generated by earthquakes. Those are the common, much more common ones, of course, since as far as we know, there's no recent examples of asteroid generated tsunamis. So I just started this project because I have a long-term collaboration with NASA on other, um, on another project with them. And so when they began looking at asteroids and worrying about tsunamis, I was a natural person who had already been looking at tsunamis so, and working with them. So I was a natural person to turn to. So that's how I got into it. Okay. So which uh, mathematical tools do you use to do this modelization? Well, for the earthquake-generated tsunamis, I've been working on developing a tool called GeoClaw, which is open source. So about 15 or so contributors to the tool. My particular contribution is in uh, mostly in the adaptive mesh refinement, which is an algorithm I developed a long time ago, which concentrates the computational work where it's most needed. So if you're simulating across an entire ocean, it can be very expensive. So you select where the work is really needed, where the wavefront is, where it's propagating. So that was my contribution. So that was the tool that I then turned to doing asteroid-generated tsunamis. And mostly, mostly it applied. There's some new things that had to be done, some new terms. The pressure formulation was different. But mostly, that's the same tool for generating tsunamis, whether or not it's asteroid or earthquake or landslide-generated tsunamis. They all have their own little wrinkles, but it's the same tool. That's the software GeoClub. Okay, and did mathematics uh, brought you to discover things that were unexpected in this uh, phenomenon? Well, there were some new mathematical wrinkles that uh, needed to be taken into the taken into account in the code. Uh, but more than that, the results were unexpected because asteroid-generated tsunamis, it turns out, don't look like earthquake tsunamis. So to understand the, was it right or not? Uh, did it make sense? How do you evaluate? You don't have data to validate it. So we made a model problem. So we used math in making a model problem that we could analyze, and then we could compare that the results made sense according to the model problem. So mathematics was very helpful in trying to understand the results of our simulation. Okay. And how this work is used practically to protect people or to take measures? To Well, we're not at the point of really predicting asteroids, but the software for earthquake-generated tsunamis has been very widely used. Uh, I'm not just talking about the hundreds of or thousands of downloads, but the people in the open source community have used it, for example, to plan evacuation routes. If a tsunami comes, how, how far inland do you think it will flood? How high do you have to go to avoid the flooding zone? Um, Randy Levesque, who I work with, has designed uh, used the results of simulations in helping design a vertical evacuation structure. If you can't get out of a region, how high do you have to go, let's say, to a rooftop if you want to um, not be inundated by the water? So it's been very influential in, in uh, predictive, in, in trying to predict just how serious a uh, tsunami would be. 
the west coast of America is prone to very big earthquakes, the M9 subjection zone, it's called. And uh, these are the, then there's a half hour warning, taps. It's very close to shore. So uh, this software has been used a lot to model what would happen in that case by others, by Randy Lubeck and the others. So that's, the, again, the GeoClaw software. Okay, Marsha, thank you very much. Thank you.